Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet. Nope. (laughs) And welcome to another Tadpog podcast. Just rolling with it, huh? Yep, rolling with it. All right, cool. (laughs) A show that happens twice a week where two old guys talk about old games. This week, Dave, Mm -hmm. it's Wednesday, or it will be Wednesday. And I want to dance. Dance? Dance. Magic dance? Dance. What magic dance? Is that the uh, in Labyrinth? I guess. God, they got what the Goblin King sing, sings? Dance, magic dance. Maybe. I don't know. I'm <laughs> Confession, I've seen that movie once. I, I, yeah, <laughs> me too. Once. I know a lot of people really like it, so um, I, thought it was, I thought it was pretty okay. I, when I was a kid, it scared the shit out of me. I bet. So, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, you should watch it as a kid, I don't <laughs> think. The scene with like the hands and like the swamp monsters scared the shit out of me. As a there kid. should be a warning at the beginning. Warning: This movie does contain David Bowie. <laughs> don't see this if you are eight <laughs> they and just, don't like seeing David Bowie's bulge. Right? They just blur out anything below David Bowie's waist. But today is it's Wednesday, so that means it's the original flavor of Tadpog mm-hmm. breaking down IGN's top one hundred list of Super Nintendo games. That's what we do today is IGN's 32nd ranked game, Mm -hmm. The Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Yep. Sounds like a storybook. (laughs) (laughs) I I have a... But first, but first, Mm -hmm. I'm your bearded host, Tyler. And I've been holding on to this story, hoping that the subject of the story would be a guest host and and we could share it, but I'm increasingly not thinking that she ever will be. So I'll just go ahead and tell it. Okay. Can, who is it? Can you tell that? Uh, wrestling superstar, Leva Bates. She's not going to be on the show? I want her to come on the show. I want to come on the show, too, but her schedule is so tight and she lives so far away. Like I'd forget about this story before the time she actually comes on. Okay. But I'm sure I'm sure she wants to. It'll just be all the planets will have to align to actually get her in Ted Puck's studio. We'll just have to go to her. Yeah, that's probably, we'll yeah that, then it would happen. Let's quit her jobs yeah. and, and <laughs> go, go to Florida. Go to but when she, uh, when uh, Leva Bates lived with Jacob, Jacob of Wolf Fighting fame mm-hmm. and I, uh, 2002, my freshman year at Murray State, uh, she was dating Jacob, and she basically lived with us the last like semester and a half before she graduated. She graduated 2000, like 2002 from Murray State, and basically all she did in the apartment, like she would go to class. She was like a double major in TV and radio or something like that. So she'd just go to class. She'd come back. Uh, play D and D with us, have sex with Jacob, and play Dynasty Warriors. She loved Dynasty Warriors. She would get up early before class and play Dynasty Warriors. We go to bed. She'd be playing Dynasty Warriors. So I remember her and Jacob had a thing where they would they would do wrestling moves on each other. They were both fans, you know, their whole lives of wrestling, especially like chops or fake hits or whatever. That was like their cute couple thing. Chops. Where like are, you karate chop someone like with the back of your hand to their chest. Uh-huh. It makes a really loud noise, so it's kind of impressive but it doesn't actually really hurt anybody very much. So Leva would always just chop the shit out of Jacob. So it's kind of like, it kind of sounds like spanking. Yeah, it was like their version of spanking. Yeah, like it's like it's like backward spanking. <laughs> you do it with the other side of the hand and on the chest. <laughs> but I remember one morning, like I woke up and she's on the couch, like legs crossed, or she's sitting uh, to be uh, politically correct, what Meg tells her kids. She was sitting crisscross applesauce. Okay. Because you can't say Indian style. So Why not? You have to say Chris, uh, not, it's not politically uh, politically correct. Is, did people in India not sit that way? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> nope. I just, you just dropped some knowledge on me. <laughs> <laughs> we, we play Street Fighter. Dalzim never sets that way. He said, if he um, does, his feet are up. I'm pretty sure. It's like Lotus style. That's how I do it. That's, that's lo- lo- Lotus' is feet up and uh-huh. the Indian style is feet down. But okay. no one in India actually, t- they're all feet up. No one cares. No one cares what the Lotus has to say about it. No. Nope. <laughs> But she, she's. I'm gonna make it my goal to go to India now, just just to see if I can find a guy that's sitting like that, and then be like, there, I'm, I'm calling it sitting Indian style. 
but she's sitting there completely zoned out, doesn't even realize I wake up and walk into the room. And I'm thinking, I'm going to go up and scare her with a chop. Okay. I'm going to go up and I'm going to chop, but I'm going to hit the side of the couch beside her head. Okay, you're going to chop the couch. I'm going to chop the couch the beside old, her and The scare old chop her. the couch maneuver. Exactly. Yeah. The, old, the old goof yeah. chop the couch. Because she's zoned at Dynasty Warriors hard, not paying any attention. So I walk up to do it and... I don't know if I trip over my pants or I snag something on the floor, but my chop misses the couch. And what actually happens is I full force walk into the room no, I and, don't, no. and just backhand oh, her in the face. Oh, no. Like, it's just like, I just... Good morning! <laughs> like, I don't even say anything. Like, I got this walk up. So, so to her... God. To, to, from her perspective, I get up. Stand in the doorway for a second, and then walk over and just backhand her as hard as I can <laughs> in the face. What? what no, so then what? She beat the shit out well, of you. I did it, and then immediately like, oh shit! But there was that split second between me realizing what I did and her reaction, and I've never seen something more heartbreaking in my life. She just she looked at me like I had just picked up her puppy and broken its neck. Like she's like. No, you're not the one that's gonna. No, you don't hurt me. You love me. So I remember, and I immediately just like, I <laughs> cradle her head like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But she took it like a champ. She didn't cry. She was fine. She was clearly meant to be a wrestler back then. Yeah, you were like training. Yeah, I was helping you were, her yeah, out. You were like you're training. welcome for where you are today. For me, just. That- Slapping you in the face. That's what they call all uh, women beaters, I think. <laughs> Just wrestling trainers. Wrestling tra- <laughs> <laughs> No, officer, uh, we were doing chops. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're training for wrestling. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> What's up, internet? I am Dave, your bespectacled host, and I've never hit a woman. But <laughs> I have bit one. I'm going to change my story. Oh, gosh. I hope I haven't told this story. I like how proper I got all of a sudden. Like how, oh, gosh. Golly. Gee. I hope I haven't told this fucking story. <laughs> Have I told the story about, uh, well, stop me if you've heard this. But I mean, I've, I know I've heard it yeah. outside of this show. All right, I'm well, pretty sure you haven't told it, though. Okay. When I was in, I may have said on the show before that, man, I was really into dinosaurs when I was like kindergarten, first grade. Love dinosaurs so much, so much. I would, I would go home. I'd read that one dinosaur zoo book. You know what I'm talking about. That's why I got zoo yeah. books was for that dinosaur zoo book because uh, <laughs> they had the best drawings in there. Uh, so I'd go home and I'd read this. Oh, and then I'd watch all these. Like my mom had recorded all these PBS dinosaur shows, and I'd watch those. And I would go out and like play soccer and like pretend I was a soccer dinosaur and. <laughs> So De- I was developing the Mesolithic me- area, the, the the soccer dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, those didn't have the the strong genes to evolve, so <laughs> um, so they turned into birds instead. I mean, that depends on what part of the country you live in, I guess. I'm waiting for Tony to correct whatever era I just said that dinosaur was in. Um, I, I used Pale- to know. Paleolithic. Uh, I mean, Mes- Jur- Mesolithic, right? Meso- Mesolithic? Me- uh, uh, we'll wait for corrections. Okay. <laughs> Jurassic, that's too easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I know I know. there's Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous, but those are like periods, not eras, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, man, I was at school. I was in kindergarten, I remember, and I was just pretending to be a dinosaur. That's what I mean, that's what you do when you're in first grade. That's what I did when I was in first mm-hmm. grade. Um, and... We're, we're all in line. You know how kids line up at the water fountain, uh, I guess, to like instill order and, and, <laughs> into ruly children. You have to line up so it's not like a free-for-all. Um, the girl in front of me, she was taking so long. She was taking so long at the water fountain. And it's kind of like, you know those Bugs Bunny cartoons where like they're on a desert island and they haven't eaten for like weeks. And then like all of a sudden, one of them like <laughs> sees the other one as like a... Mm. roasted turkey or something yeah. like that. I kind of had like that moment where I like I shifted into dinosaur mode. <laughs> and I was like, man, I really am thirsty. What would a dinosaur do in this situation? And I just bit her. I just bit her like on the shoulder <laughs> and just latched on. And she started screaming and crying. And um, I'm not going to lie. I don't think I knew that what I was doing was wrong. 
<laughs> I was just I was just a dinosaur. I was just eating another dinosaur. <laughs> so <laughs> So I mean, I'm sure I got in trouble. I don't know. There's uh, sorry. There's not a whole lot, not a whole lot of falling action in this story. <laughs> Are you Facebook friends with this girl cuz you need to be? I am. Okay, good. I am and we had we were friends in high school and we talked about it a lot. <laughs> uh, she'd be like, "Hey, remember that time you bit me at the water fountain?" Yeah, I was pretending to be a dinosaur. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you were taking a really long time. <laughs> she was kind of being rude about it. It was like she was really taking her time. So like, the, you were, you know, respectable dinosaur, like maintaining order. Vi- a vigilante. Vigilante dinosaur. Yeah, I was, yeah. I, was thinking, I was thinking water fountain justice into my own hands <laughs> or talons, whatever. There are no dinosaurs in the legend of the mystical ninja. They're not. Is that That's a long title. Mm-hmm. Is that the real title of the game? Yeah. I believe it's a sequel, so it's apparently it's a series of games. Yeah, I've got a little bit of information. On okay, that. so before we break it down, then yeah, man, I almost went super racist for a moment, super racist, and made like like the the Asian train, like you know the. No, I'm uh, not racist, Tyler. Like <laughs> me, the what? What? What does the racist Asian train sound like? <laughs> do, do you need me to like roll the gong out or something? Or no, it was, uh, Stephen Colbert does it for his character that. Dun, 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 dun. So it's going to do that as a train noise, but... Are you, yeah, talking, are you talking no. about ping? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, so an, so a Japanese train is what you're doing. Yeah, it's a super fast bullet train. Great. They don't sound like regular trains, so... Whoosh. Okay, all right, that's there good. Go. <laughs> I like it. The, I've got a two-parter, do you mind? Please. Because I really didn't like... I did some research. I didn't really like Wikipedia's entry so much. Mm. So I'm going to start with that, and then I'm going to segue. I don't want to... I like order, clearly. Mm-hmm. I was taught that at the, as, as a young dinosaur, that order is preferred. <laughs> you can't just go eating other dinosaurs because they're drinking. Um, so what I'm going to do is I, I may start shifting because I, I think that TV Tropes actually has some really, okay. really good entries as opposed to Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. So fuck it. I'm not doing Wikipedia. This time, it's in, in honor of Japanese Bullet Train, we're going to do Dave Reed's from TV Tropes. Like it. Are you fine like with that? Yeah. Okay, good. We're in the clear. Okay, guys. Ganbare Goemon, known as Mystical Ninja in the West, is a long running series of video games by Konami that began in 1986 with the release of Mr. Goemon for the arcade. The plots revolve around the chivalrous thief Goemon and his friends Ibisumaru, Sasuke, mm, and, and Ye. I think it's Ye. Y A E. You find her in the in this game we're about to talk about. Oh, okay. If it's not Ye, I think it should be because I kept making Kanye West references <laughs> while I was playing this game. <laughs> so what they are doing is they set out to defeat whatever zany villain is threatening Japan or the universe at the time. Surreal humor ensues. Um, this is why, and, and here we get to the meat of why I actually wanted to read the TV Tropes entry instead. Because Wikipedia doesn't touch on this. And I kind of want to delve into this a little bit mm-hmm. on this episode. While Western gamers are largely unfamiliar with the series, it's actually one of Konami's biggest cash cow franchises in Japan, having spawned a great number of games, including some manga, a few anime, and loads of merchandise since its debut. But if the games are so popular, then why aren't more of them released in English? Uh, cultural barriers, mostly. One of Ganbari Goemon's biggest draws, aside from the vibrant graphics, superb music, superb music, and great gameplay, is its bizarre brand of uniquely Japanese humor that makes translation difficult. So it kind of goes back I to we that. talked about I that, that. I think um, when we did Pocky and Rocky Two, yeah, we talked about that. How I think a lot of the humor you could tell, like they were setting up jokes in the game and. I, like I was picking up the cues that it was a joke, but it wasn't like, oh, I didn't actually have an emotional response where I'm like, oh, laughter. <laughs> <laughs> this is humorous. Yeah. My lizard brain just couldn't process it. So it's only you just have to, hey, this isn't like my culture at all. So it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I guess after watching so much anime that it's just kind of like you pick up on when it's like, oh, this is a joke. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I, yeah. I feel like very Vulcan almost, where it's like, ah, uh, yes, a joke. <laughs> I All right. This. But this game, I I thoroughly enjoyed playing this game. I'm not surprised. I when, thought I had, a good, not, I had a good time. I thought you would. When I was playing it, one of the first things I thought was, I bet Tyler's really enjoying mm-hmm. this. Because it's, 
Uh, it's it's colorful. It's vibrant. The music is very very good. Uh, it's I think it was just so much fun, and it's it's a good balance until the very end. It's a it's a very good balance of of challenging. I thought it was pretty challenging. Um, I think you're right. I think there's a good balance, but I. I thought that it kind of spiked in the beginning because maybe you had a completely different experience. And maybe it's because I really haven't played a game like this. This game is kind of the way it's set up is different than a lot of things I've played because some of it's platforming and some of it's top down um, traversing like kind of an overworld. Maybe sort of. Yeah. And then you're buying things in shops and you're finding items and you're you're upgrading. So it's kind of like to me, it felt like a weird mishmash of like action RPG and a in a platformer. No, you're right because like you start out in a town. It's the the main character Horo Horo, I believe is the name Hor- of the town. <laughs> and uh, it's the main because it, what's it's just like cherry on the top is this has co-op mode you play through the whole game co-op which i did not i did not try i only i only played single player i always feel like such an asshole when we don't try co-op well, I mean, <laughs> we, just, we should just move in together just burnt and earn it up and then we can do all the co-op and all the games we want to do i'm down let's do it but uh this was one of uh jess dockery of silk street post one of her favorite games ever so she was telling me about it like her and her sister played this constantly she must have kids. been like the only kid in Western Kentucky who owned it? Probably. Did, had you played this game before? I'd never even heard of I it. I hadn't either. And it was, when I started playing it for Tadpog, it was one of those experiences where it's like, man, I wish I would have known about this game as a kid because I would have enjoyed the hell out of it. Yeah, no, I really would have too. Josh and I would have, Josh Funeral Racers fan, would have very much loved this game growing up. Because I'd never, I never remember even like seeing a copy or seeing an advertisement. I don't know this game like at all. No, and the the game art, the art on the cartridge is pretty bad. And I don't know, I'm curious mm. if the game art in Japan was different. I bet you it was considering that it spun off into manga and anime. Yeah. I mean because I kind of feel like it got the UN squadron treatment treatment a little bit on the game art because it's almost kind of westernized, mm-hmm. I feel like. Uh it doesn't like looking at the game art, I'm not like, oh, this is clearly Japanese. What it looked like to me was it looked like a Hudson Soft game or something. You yeah, know? it does. It very much does. And when I was reading about it, it was uh, telling me that that this was one of the first games to like break through into more like traditional Japanese culture. Yeah, and with history and jokes and Folklore references and stuff like that. Yeah, like there wasn't. I mean, sure, there was like Ninja Gaiden and stuff like that, but like none of it was like accurate or humorous or portrayed it in any like relative sort of way until like this game yeah and uh, even games like ninja gaiden i think have like limited cultural references right mm-hmm. i mean really truly it's a ninja game yeah it's, it's not just, it's not a japanese game that's true yeah that's a good way to put it it's a ninja game and not a japanese game this game very much like it just oozes it just oozes japan yeah because and i didn't the music is great but i wouldn't like the way i want to describe it like i guess you could say japanese but then like that made me like okay that's i'm sure that's safe because like <laughs> yeah that's pretty safe to say because like, i feel like when i was reading the guide it described the music as classically oriental and i was like it is because i from what i've heard like oriental that's not a word you're supposed to use anymore unless you're referring to rugs or the D books oriental adventures yeah so I was that's like, a proper noun <laughs> that's true yeah, no it's in there <laughs> I but, mean, maybe the way it was structured, maybe the way the music was structured, like, I don't know, what are they, do they use like Mixolydian scales or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> now you're saying words I don't know. <laughs> I'm just making them up. Okay. Paleo- like mix, Paleolithic. Mix, <laughs> Mixolydian, that's what gives you Jedi powers. Okay. Metachlorians. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Too much Metachlorians in the pool. It burns. But you start off as the the hero, the the thief. You could, I think you can choose between him or... His like it's something to do with Yin, and then the yeah. other his partner is Yen, Dr. Yang. Yeah, there's Kid Yin. Yes, there you go. And um, I never played as the second player, but I think it is like Dr. Yang. Yeah, they're, or they're, Mr. They're, Yang. They're pretty Sorry. identical, but I never wanted to play as him because a I didn't want to be player two in a in a single player game because that's just ridiculous. <laughs> and um, the other reason being he looks weird. 
He does. He has like the, a mustache that like it's, connects to his sideburns. But or, it's also a hat. He has like this mustache hat almost. And it's like I can't really describe it. It's just you have to see it. Um, all right, show notes. Okay, yeah. Mr. Yang's mustache hat. I mean, if I had to like sum it up with like one word, I would use the word porn star. Okay. Kind of got like a porn star quality to it. <laughs> And not like a reputable one either. Like, okay, if I could, if I could do like two words, I would say dumpster porn star. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dumpster porn star. <laughs> There's a lot of games you can discover. <laughs> That's going to be how you can search a search term. You can put into Tad Fog and see if you can find this episode. Dumpster porn star. Man, if we're not, if Tad Fog at, after this episode of Tad Fog is not number one on Google search for dumpster porn star, then we're in trouble. <laughs> But because you start off in a town, and apparently there's a ghost has invaded one of the houses, and you have to go stop it. Yeah, it, you don't. There is an opening scene that explains all that, but I didn't understand. It. I didn't understand it either. <laughs> it, didn't, see, it didn't make any sense to no. me whatsoever. I don't know if it's a translation thing. It, it had, had to have been. been because it just like I was watching the intro, just like. Uh, <laughs> I is know. This in it? Wait, oh, oh, let's just hit stuff. Okay. And it's fine. like all dramatic, and they do it like anime style. Like there's dramatic zoom in, and then there's obvious comedic effect. And uh, I just wish it made sense. <laughs> but you you go to that town, and of course, in like in like towns or a map. Basically, whenever you go into a dungeon, then the perspective perspective shifts. Right to like a two D side scrolling. Kind right. Of. So otherwise, it's like you know top down Legend of Zelda style. Right. And your weapon is unupgraded. You have like a short pipe. Yeah, a tobacco it's pipe. weapon. Yeah. A tobacco pipe. It's for smoking tobacco, Tyler. <laughs> tobacco. And then as you kill, well, you do thump random villagers. Oh, you kill them. Except for women. You can, don't, don't, don't hit women or you lose money. Right. But anybody Lawsuits. else is fair game. <laughs> so I guess it's only appropriate that I talked about. I hit, I, when I, I hit know. Leva Bates, I lost $20. Right. <laughs> but eventually you'll, the, the kittens that have uh, the, good, the good luck kittens, I yes. what they're called, will pop out and those upgrade your weapon. That's your, a- that's a power up. Yeah, that's the only time I've seen like a good luck cat as a power up. I think, <laughs> but your pipe will increasingly get longer. Mm, yeah, it will. Your pipe gets longer. Yeah, you see, you see a good luck kitten, and your pipe will get longer <laughs> until it becomes a yo-yo. A lucky kitten. Yes, that's the third. It's the ultimate form. Mm-hmm. The final form of a <laughs> tobacco pipe is a spiked yo-yo. Because <laughs> your weapons in this game, you have the pipe, a yo-yo with the upgraded pipe, uh, bombs. Mm-hmm. You can throw coins. Yeah, like shuriken. Which I thought that was interesting. That is really cool. Because I like that mechanic. Basically, every enemy drops ten dollars worth of coins. Not everyone. Like a lot of enemies, uh, just about every enemy drops a power up, mm-hmm. but it varies because some will drop the the lucky kitten, lucky cat. Man, we got to figure out what to call that. Uh, and then some will drop the coin, like mm-hmm. you said, uh, which ends up being ten bucks. Um, and then some will drop scrolls, which. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, those allow you to perform judo. I'm glad it sounds like you didn't fuck with that at all. I couldn't figure it out. I yeah. tried to. I tried to figure that out. And it's <laughs> like as you pick up scrolls, it um, the top left where your health bar is, it like tallies your power. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that that was corresponding to the number of scrolls I picked up. So it take once you go to a, a judo master mm-hmm. and learn a judo move, which and is only him applicable an on that level, amount of money. an unbelievable amount of money. And then you learn the judo move, and every time you do it, it costs you 10 scrolls, and you can only use it on that level. But I couldn't figure out how to, like, I once I trained it, I couldn't figure out how to use it. I bought, I remember when I saved up and I bought one. Yeah. And then, yeah, I had no idea how to do anything with Man, it. Man, I was hoping so we I, were going to sit down, and I was going to be like, please tell me how you perform <laughs> judo. <Mm-mm>, no <laughs> idea. And even when I was um, watching, like, walkthroughs and guides and stuff like that online, no one else used judo. I've never, I've never even seen a judo move being used. Maybe that was only in the uh, Japanese release. <laughs> maybe they didn't maybe, port it maybe over. Maybe they forgot. <laughs> I tried all the buttons, and I even look like even in Game Facts, I don't think they tell you how to use it. They just tell you what they do. So <laughs> yeah. it's just like I don't know. Mm. Okay, I I messed with it for like fifteen minutes, and then it was like, eh, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna play the <laughs> just game. Just throw coins and hit the pop up. It's fine. But I like I. Like that you brought up that you throw coins because it's interesting because it's really the only ranged attack that you have. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool because it's a shared resource because as you throw the coins, you lose that money. Mm-hmm. Like that money disappears from your 
your pouch. So when you find a shop later on, you're going to have the more money you throw away, <laughs> the less you're going to have mm-hmm. to spend. See, I didn't I didn't even know you could switch weapons for a few levels in. Then I was like, oh, hey, nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is much easier <laughs> yeah. now. Man, you need the you need to throw those coins yeah. sometimes. Yeah. It's like just ridiculous. <laughs> um and we didn't also we didn't mention that when your weapon is powered up all the way to yo yo, it stays that way until you're hit. Mm. And then it resets back to your short pipe. To short pipe, yeah. You have to wait for to find another so, lucky kitten. Yeah, it usually doesn't take very long. Like it's it's uh disheartening, but yeah, it's not hard to get back to back to the yo yo. Did you find yourself farming a lot? God, yes. You did, so it's not just me. Yeah, you I have found to myself farm so much. Do you have to though? Well, I feel like you're supposed to play the mini games. Yeah. Because there are so many there are a lot mini, of mini games, games in this fucking game. Like yeah. it is there's like a Mario Party inside of this game. Yeah, half <laughs> half of this game is mini games. That's that's why I didn't finish it. So. I, I did not finish this game. I got to I think they call them warlock stages. I don't know why. Yeah. I got the warlock stage. Different five. parts around Japan. It's like warlock stage, blah blah. <laughs> right. Warlock stage. And then like it's Kid Yin and Mr. Yang jumping up and down. So I guess there's a warlock somewhere. I don't know. I missed <laughs> that. But um yeah, man, these mini games. I got to Warlock stage five. I think I could have actually finished the game if I hadn't stopped and played every mini game. Because mm. God, okay, I wrote I wrote them all down. Good. All right. So of course they're always just random houses on the overworld section where it's top down, and then all sorts of houses that always have the mini games. Right. Like once high you, low. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once you see the Tanuki. Yeah, who's, a Tanuki will warn you there's danger ahead, uh-huh. and then it switches. That's the dungeon where it switches over to side, you know, the side view perspective, and that's sort of the where you fight the boss and then move on. Is the Tanuki not the most horrifying thing you've ever seen? <laughs> that thing is scary looking. It is. See, I the Chinese restaurant I, that was close to me growing up. They have a huge. Chong's. As soon as you walk <laughs> in the door, they have a huge one. So I'm very used to that image. So I was like. Okay, now I want ham fried rice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every time I see one of those statues, I just, I guess, I don't, I don't know. It's like a, it's like a horror monster. <laughs> like you could make, you could make Tanuki the horror movie, and I would be scared. Because <laughs> <laughs> even like, I'd seen that that statue, the statue of a Tanuki before the Tanuki suit in Mario Three. Oh, really? Yeah, but of wow. course I didn't know what that was. I knew what the Tanuki suit was before I what the actual Tanuki was. I just gotcha. thought it was a weird bear statue they had. It looks in, like a bear, doesn't Chong's. it? Yeah. It's a raccoon dog, but it looks <laughs> like a bear. But before you get there, they give you the opportunity because I think most games you walk away with like a hundred dollars or more from every mini game if you win. I think that's accurate. So let's see. There's the game Goblin. Yes. I played Goblin once. Me too. I thought it was awful yes. and did not do it again. It's kind of like the Bozo, what, cup game or bucket game? <laughs> yeah, where he's the ping pong's into the yeah, bucket. Yeah, except instead of throwing, I mean, you are still throwing a ping pong ball into a bucket, but it's on top of a goblin's head. Yep. So I don't know. And you have no way of judging like no how way. far away the goblin is uh-uh. other than like throw four ping pong balls <laughs> to kind of get the idea. By then you're out of ping pong right. balls. Uh, there's a painting mini game where you just have to paint within the lines, which is essentially snake. So, oh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't you, play you have that to one. move the paintbrush without crossing the path. So, what oh. it is, it's essentially snake. Okay, which is really, really difficult to do on the Super <laughs> Nintendo. I thought it would be fine, right? Because I was like, oh, this is snake. I got this. Nope. <laughs> nope. I, the only way I could play Snake is if it's on a one and three quarter inch screen. Yep. The classic, <laughs> classic Nokia made out of yep. some kind of other world turn that never breaks. Uh, whack a mole. Yeah, whack a mole. Which there's two difficulties. There's slow and fast. Uh, fast is very difficult. <laughs> I did try it. I would not recommend it. There's a concentration, which is sort of like a match game, right? Yeah, it's memory. The memory card game, um, which is rigged. Because you essentially, like, if you go first, there's two turns. If And if it randomly selects who goes first, you or the computer. And if it's you, you just kind of have to guess. You just kind of have to be like, well, I'm maybe the this card and this card. Oh, no. And then the computer will go. And as soon as someone gets a match, the game ends. So it's like, if yeah. the com- and it's like inevitably, the computer will turn over the match to the card you turned over. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, well, they win again. Great. <laughs> uh, there's the lottery. There is a lottery. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, there's the racetrack. Yes, not chocobo racing. So both both things I never played. I played. If it's, if I played it's both luck of base, I didn't play. Well, because those are sins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, dice. Yeah, high or low, which I played a lot of. I played, I played dice. Oh, a few I times. played a lot the of sexy that. lady. The sexy lady's asking you to right? roll dice. Okay, <laughs> you thought she was sexy too. So it's not just me. So, so sexy. sexy. So sexy. Man, she's sitting there just looking over her shoulder yeah, at you. She's always like, looking over her shoulder. Right. Like her neck must be broken into that position. <laughs> she's like, she's like Chun Li's attainable younger sister. <laughs> <laughs> There's the maze game. Yeah, the three D maze. One through a maze. Yeah, I thought that was easy. There's the quiz. Yeah, which, which that's, is bizarre. That's how that's how I won a lot of money on the quiz. I won a lot, a lot of money on the quiz because you can't. It's like a game show. It's set up like a mm-hmm. game show. And it, did you do it the same way I did? Like all you have to do is memorize the answer to one, and then as soon as you see the first word yep. of the question, you just buzz in. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> it's so easy to. So I the raked game. in like five grand. Oh off my of, god! Off of playing that. Uh, let's see. There's. And other other buildings, there's the Diary Keeper, which is essentially your save game. Right. Which will give you the password to get back to that which point. Which is a really crazy long password <laughs> with a lot of fucked up characters. Yep. Uh, there's the Fortune Teller, yep. which I didn't really get the purpose of the Fortune Teller. Um, I will tell you that one time I went in and paid the, the Fortune Teller $20, and I wished to be big. And then I woke up, and um, I guess I was bigger. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell. If I was bigger, it wasn't noticeable. Okay, just yeah. a little bit uh, Let's see. Of course, there's the dojo. A uh, karate master screams at you, and you have to pay like six hundred to two thousand dollars <coughs> to learn a judo move. Bless you, but thank you. Mm-hmm. It was worthless. Uh, there's also an arcade. Yeah, which yeah. I spent time in. I unfortunately, can you earn money from the arcade or just spend so. it? Yeah, because I just it. spent it. Because there's you can play hockey, uh huh, tear down, laser. And Gradius. Gradius, yep. <laughs> Although it's Gradius, but we only have one life. I didn't play that one. I always played um, their version of Super Super Breakout. Which is, I think that was Teardown. Yeah. But that's, yeah, trying to play those games and get money to buy armor. Because you can get, you can buy multiple pairs of sandals. Each pair of sandal makes you, uh, sandals makes you quicker. And jump higher. Mm-hmm. And you have uh, a Kabuto or a helmet. Uh-huh. And then uh, armor. And then you can buy pizza. You can buy pizza by the slice or the pie. Mm-hmm. It's best that you buy it by the pie. I think at one really? level you can buy hamburgers instead of pizzas. Yes. So that just whenever you die, it it's like a red potion in Zelda. As soon as you die, it brings you back to You're full. right back. Yep. And you can have, I could only carry three at a time. I always, when I roll as a ninja, I constantly have three slices of pizza on me. <laughs> uh, you can press down and sort of snail crawl. Okay. On the side scrolling levels. Yes. Can it, I can I go on a tangent? Mm-hmm. Do you mind? Please. It's in my notes. Yes. You may it may be in your notes too. This game reminded me a lot of Monster Party. Yeah. It is also <laughs> in my notes. And this was not when I first noticed it, the crawling that he does, but it is when I it was like the cherry on top because he crawls just like Mark exactly. crawls. And Only much faster. Like you can just run through the go through the whole game like this. And it's better that you do that. He just DJ Connors all the way through. <laughs> and it's just like he just lays. I need to describe this crawl. He lays with his chest flat on the ground and his head looking forward. And then he puts his butt in the air and then back down. So it's kind of like an inchworm. Yep. He's kind of moving like an inchworm. He's doing cock push-ups all the way through. Yes. But the the part that really reminded me of Monster Party, uh, besides the just the absurdity, because this game is just flooded with absurdity, which I love, but it's also Mark had a baseball bat. And the and a lot of the ways he would often he would beat a boss by knocking projectiles back. And that's how you beat the first boss of this game is the first boss is a giant female ghost who is spinning plates. Is that what she's doing? Yep. Those were plates? Okay. <laughs> to my knowledge, it looked like, because she had like the little sticks. Yeah. Like like she was, yeah, spinning plates. So so that's what we can look forward to in the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> spinning plates. And then like... Yeah, she looks like a ghostly m- version of Mother Brain from Chrono Trigger that spins plates at you. 
and you have to knock them back. You have to use your, well, you don't have to use your tobacco pipe, but that's what I use. Mm-hmm. You can also throw coins at it, but forget about it. You're not hitting, yeah. you're not hitting those plates <laughs> with a coin. Um, so you have to knock them back at her. And that's what really reminded me of Monster Party because that's pretty much how you beat a lot of the enemies. Yeah, like yeah. 80% of the bosses. I remember, I had a rough time on that until I just got in the corner. Yeah. Got in the corner yeah. and just faced her. And then just like most of the time I would just duck. duck. And then, yeah, yep. hit him back at her. There was no problem. I had a hard time with her too until I did that. And that's why I think that she's like one of the hardest bosses that I fought. And it's that's why I think this yeah, game has a weird... Really, you're right. It is a hard boss to start out on. It's a weird difficulty curve. But uh, let's see. I guess there are also ends and saunas. Yeah. Those but, just... The more you pay at an end, the more health you'll recover. Sure. And then you go into a sauna and Just like real around. life. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and in the sauna, it reminds you of Suikoden <laughs> because you just sit in the sauna until you get hot and you recover some health. Uh, at every stage, you get the golden elephant... Yeah, it's like a statue, right? What did that do? It's like a save point. Oh, okay. If you, every time I got it, I saw it was like an, in my possession, but yeah. I have no idea what this does. Yeah, if you die uh, and you have the, the elephant statue, you can you get an option to go back to where you picked it up. It's a save point. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Well, like I got a rundown of, of the bosses. Good. So <laughs> I, I saw five of them. Because you've got the ghost in the haunted house. Yes. The second one is you go to like a kabuki theater and you fight a lantern oh, man. I loved this boss. Because he's got what looks like a Christmas tree on his back mm-hmm. full of paper lanterns. Mm-hmm. And then the paper lanterns will open up and little bit fire beasties inside will yeah, throw fire yeah. at you. And you can yeah, you hit hit the fire and extinguish it, but you have to knock out all the red lamps, then all the white lamps, and then you can hit him in the head until he collapses. Right. I, I thought it was a great fight because um the quote unquote Christmas tree on his back it or they're actually platforms so oh, it's like yeah. you you have to you use the boss you stand on mm-hmm. the boss on those ledges to destroy the lanterns uh, I thought that and he's moving constantly of mm-hmm. course so you're on this you're on this moving ledge while fire's being spit at you uh it's cool I mean it was, I you don't see boss fights like that no that's true and then from that that's where you save like a kitsune girl. Like the ninja who's free, the ninja tells you, you need to go to this place now. I think that's where you say the cat, the ninja cat. Oh, the cat. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, and then the next one is like an octopus, like a giant octopus in the third stage. In the amusement park. Yes. That was an incredibly easy boss. Mm-hmm. What are the, what's the name of the, you'll know this, what are the name of the octopuses that shoot rocks at you in Zelda? Octorox. It's, that's what it was essentially, <laughs> yeah. but it only spit tinier octopuses at you. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Then the next one is has the next one introduces a mini boss and then a regular boss on stage four. Um, first, you fight sumo wrestlers, right? And then you fight a giant face. This th- I loved this boss. Did you think about me when you when you played this boss? <laughs> it's like Dave. Yeah, this was like the this best. Is, this is weird. It makes no sense. This ever growing face, Dave will enjoy. This. Can I can I explain this one? Yep, and yep. and if I if I'm off or if I miss something, if I leave something out, let me know. But this boss fight is awesome because once you defeat the sumo wrestlers, right? Uh, I think they're spirits. You kill something before you fight the face. Was it the sumo wrestlers? It had to be. And, and their spirits go into a mask that's back on the wall, right? And you're like, as soon as that happened, I was like, there's no good is going to come out of this. <laughs> no good is going to come out of this. And sure enough, the mask comes off the wall and um, starts attacking you. And the way it does it is it gets really big and it's it starts bouncing around the stage trying to hit mm-hmm. you, right? And so far it's kind of weird, right? So far, <laughs> so far we're I'd say we're probably we're at uh, Josh Josh Nance of Unirasers fame. We're at a six in weirdness. <laughs> um, but when you deal enough damage to this giant face. That's when it cranks it up to nine, man. <laughs> and it's like Mr. Potato Head style, like his eyes and nose and mouth and ears just kind of like <laughs> fall off and then like land on the ground. And then like the rest of the mask like fades into the background. And it's like, I don't know what's going on. Like I'm trying to stay away from all these face parts because I don't know if they're going to hurt me. I don't know if they're going to sprout legs and start slicing and dicing me. And then all of a sudden, the face, the blank face, just comes back in, and all the parts just bloop, 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 come back on. It is like a Peter Gabriel video. <laughs> <laughs> it's just insanity. Because yeah, the face gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it takes up like three fourths of the screen. The whole damn screen. Like <laughs> right before he dies, I couldn't avoid him. It was just like I don't know. I guess I'm just gonna stay in the bottom corner. 
Yeah, that's what you have to do. It's trying to hit like his rosy cheeks. Cause like you can't eventually hit like just his whole body. You have to hit his cheeks or his nose or one of those parts that collapses and then he'll crack in half. I love, I, I, Tyler, I don't know if I've played a, a fought a boss in a game. <laughs> this is like a World of Warcraft boss. Oh. Like this is like way ahead of its time, man. <laughs> whole lot of stuff going on. Uh, on level five, you fight a, you fight a kite full of ninjas. Okay, see, I didn't get to this part. That sounds amazing. Because it's just the ninjas coming in at you and they jump down and you have to fight off all the ninjas flying on this kite. Is it a box kite or is it like just a, it's just on a, a diamond kite? It's a diamond kite, yeah. Okay. It's a, di- a diamond kite comes in, the ninja will jump off and you hit it until there's just one ninja at the top. It doesn't do anything. Are they being led by Benjamin Franklin? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Whatever the Japanese equivalent of Benjamin Franklin is. Probably Miyamoto, right? I mean... That's fair. That's fair. If he also likes French whores, then yes. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> oh, that, you said French. I thought you said French Canadian. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, then finally the Super Ninja jumps down off of the kite, and you have to fight the Super Ninja, who's just a slightly more difficult version uh, until you... Yeah, you... Fight all and kill all the kite ninjas, and that's that, the boss of five. That sounds slightly less inspired than the giant face you yeah, have to yeah. murder. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Uh, level six is Warlock Zone, please. Warlock Tyler. Zone six. That's true. Tyler, please. <laughs> a samurai with a box of flowers on his back. Okay. The samurai himself is immune to all damage. You have to hit his flower box. Well, why is he carried around then? <laughs> I would hide it. <laughs> Because he'll jump up and open the box and flower petals go everywhere that you have to hit out of the air before they hit you. That's cool. And then jump side to side and he will spew noxious breath at you. That Then you have to run in close to him so you can jump over it. If you're far away, the gas spreads through most of the screen. It's going to hit you if you try to play a ranged game. So you have to go melee. It's like Ravenloft. Yep. (laughs) Ravenloft. That's a deep deep cut. Yep. (laughs) So once you let's see samurai with flowers, mm-hmm. warlock zone seven, you fight a dragon. Um, it's a shitty dragon. It's fight. a shitty dragon. It's it's well, it's definitely a um, I forget I forget the type of dragon, like Fing Li. It's the long serpentine dragon with with arms. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I can picture what you're describing to me. You, it's it's one of the in Final Fantasy VI, it's one of the one of the seven dragons. It's the, like the gold dragon that's long and tall with uh-huh. like a mane gotcha. around its neck. Oh you fight one of those, it just it's easy because it's spews fireballs at you, but they spread out again so you need to get close to it. You can just run right underneath it and then just throw coins straight up. And oh really he's done in like two turns. Oh. Uh let's see. Uh stage eight you fight uh the equivalent to like a kid's toy. Do you remember like if like Infants will have uh, Buzz Lightyear. The <laughs> it's like the the rings that are different colors. That the big one goes at the bottom and then slightly higher. You yes. fight. That's how I learned about sex. You find a weird equivalent to one of those. Uh, that it's just stacks of these rings and they slowly slide out and you use it as a platform to the top and hit the head on the top and then slowly it gets down to like one layer. Then finally, when the head is the bottom one, it flips away and then goes and inhabits like. A weird machine. Wait, what does? The head does? The head. Okay. It's like a flat a flat ring head. Okay. And then it flips away and gets on the body. You have to ride a parachute up to him, and then he jumps you on usually his body. usually ride a parachute down. Yeah, I think this parachute goes up. <laughs> okay, all right. And then you're floating above it's him. It's like a corporate parachute. It's hard to explain because <laughs> he's like a torso with like two... Two uh, arms. Ball. He's got arms, but they have uh-huh. spike balls on the edge, and he swings around side to side like a like a pendulum like a or a seesaw. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then, so the trick is like you have to hit him enough times, but keep going around him fast enough that he chases you and hits himself with one of his arms, and then like game over for him. You think he would learn? You think you think he would <laughs> learn? <laughs> and that was a robot. Yeah, or animated child's play ring something okay. like that are you small like the whole level like are you small is it like nemo's house and uh, you're not quite i mean it's still a lot bigger than you okay but like the screen doesn't change he's just big okay and the last one like i thought the game was pretty challenging until i got to the last boss of course the last level you do a boss gauntlet where you fight lantern man big face and then final boss well at least you get two of the best bosses. two of the best boss fights but the last boss is a Ronin riding a temple dog. Okay. And he he shoots arrows at you. This fight is this is absolutely got to be one of the most difficult boss fights 
boss fights. Boss fights I have ever experienced in a video game. A, a boss has lots of vices, Tyler. <laughs> they have a lot of pressure on them. They have to perform. They've got shareholders they have to report to. <laughs> sorry. But this is this Ronan has no shareholders report to because he no feudal he has lord. no lord. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That because I had maxed out. I had there are different degrees of the armor you can have. So I had gold, a gold. Kabuto, I had gold armor. I had like three pairs of sandals. I had a whole pizza. Like I've got to him maxed out. Okay. And I like I like how you're like listing. I love that. It's like all these like Japanese things. <laughs> and I had a whole pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just yeah okay you're I, right. <laughs> I had my pipe and my pizza, and I couldn't bite the temple dog. <laughs> but the temple dog is immune to all damage. You can't hurt the temple dog. That is bullshit. If you hit it, it just stuns it for a second. But because that's how you take care of any mounted adversaries. You kill the mount first. Yep. You got it. You have to get. You have to get you and your adversary on on even ground. See what you have to do to this guy is he sh- throw a stake. He throw sh- a stake at the temple <laughs> dog, and he and it distracts him, and then you sneak into the junkyard. Then you ride the temple dog. <laughs> you put on tennis shoes that are guaranteed to make a kid run faster and jump higher. <laughs> it's a sandlot deep cut for mm-hmm. you. Yeah. I love it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Baseball. Yeah, we. <laughs> everything I know about baseball, I learned from Tony Goodman and the Sandlot. Uh, man, that movie makes me wish we were a movie podcast. <laughs> we could just do the Sandlot podcast, <laughs> where it comes out once a week, and we just focus on a different character in the Sandlot. We just kind of like, I don't know, spitball. Where do you think? Do you, where do you think they are? I mean, we they told us at the end of the movie, but do you believe it? Have Have you seen the TMZ of? One of the kid, one of the kids, where he is now. No, like he was super drunk. Like he's a uh, a Jersey Shore type guy now. Like okay. He's still, he's got the tall, greased hair, super tan, super ripped, and he's outside of a club and he's drunk and he's just going off on somebody about TMZ. It's like you know who the fuck I am? I was blah blah, blah in the Sandlot, motherfucker. I was blah blah, blah and the TMZ this was, guy. This was the dog in Sandlot. This- <laughs> <laughs> this is Hercules. This is Hercules in the sad life. Man, he sounds like a dick. <laughs> but I'll I'll post the video in the show notes because it's like it's oh it's the saddest thing. It's oh it's so sad just watching like a a character you might have liked fifteen years ago. I hope it like, wasn't oh. I hope it wasn't Squints. I don't I don't think it was. I mean it kinda would make sense because like there is a whole lot of like I think when uh w- Wendy is that mm-hmm. yeah? I think when Wendy goes to give him uh, Wendy ma- pepper peppercorn, when, when the whole mouth to mouth scene. Yeah, um, I don't think that would fly today. I really don't think they'd let them put that in a movie today. I think they'd be like, mm, "That's such a little assault. too rapey." Right? Yeah. Well, you're probably right. I would if it'd been the redheaded kid, it'd been the catcher. I would recognize. Yeah, them, but it, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Okay. I can't remember which kid it was. But the the boss of this game, he's shooting, but he shoots arrows right. in an arc. We were over talking you. about this this game. He shoots three arrows in an arc at you, and you have to jump up and hit the arrow back at him. But the monster party style, the frame you have to hit is incredibly small. Like you have to be right on to send the uh, the arrow back. Otherwise, at him. I'm sure it just hits you. It goes through the dog, or it goes through him. But he shoots three, oh, so you're pretty much going to get hit by one of them, probably. So not only do you have to time hitting it right, he also has to be in the right spot for him to yes, get hit? Yes, you have to hit the arrow at the right time as it's falling. Uh-huh. There are three of them, so you have to avoid the others. <laughs> okay. And, like, oh, God, it was, and his health bar is 40, like 40 ticks, mm-hmm. and each arrow takes off, like, two or three. Here's, I'm going to throw this out there. Uh, now, clearly, I didn't get to this part, but if we had learned how to use judo... Do you think that might have helped? Well, see, I looked up so many guides uh-huh. on how to beat this guy. None of them used judo. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't feel too bad. Well, that goes back to our theory that you can't actually use judo in this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just a it's a snake oil salesman. He just right? like, I'm gonna teach you this move. Yeah, eight hundred eight hundred dollars. <laughs> but don't you feel stronger? <laughs> <laughs> every guide that was successful that I saw, the arrows didn't follow uh Kid Yen. Like they were, it's like they were in a fixed point, but they followed the shit out of me. No matter where I would go, they were always moving. So I, I, I straight up, in order to beat this, I, I had to, I had to cheat. I had to cheat to Tyler, beat it. I spent, Tyler. I sunk two you were hours. So close, Tyler. I sunk two hours into this boss. Yeah, could not get him to, couldn't knock a quarter of his hit points off. Like so ridiculously difficult. So, but then I read like it's much easier with two player. Oh yeah, because the other player stuns him. 
stuns, stuns the, the temple, temple dog. dog to stay in place. So then the arrows don't go as far, and you can just uh, knock him out. So it was. So it seems like it was designed for two players. So for, two player. so. for that boss, that boss at least, yes. Okay. But once you defeat him, and then a fox jumps out of him and runs away. So then he fights you in a the much. The fox does. No, the the guy. Okay. The general of whatever the forces have been invading. Uh-huh. A fox leaves the warlock him. general. Maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, abandons him, and you have to fight him straight up, and mm-hmm. that's it's super easy. He just kind of rolls around the screen, and you jump over him, and then when he stands up, and you hit him. Okay. It's super simple compared to his first four. It sounds like he's sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you're just beating the hell out of him? Well, the ending is also Are you, are you weird. jumping him in <laughs> to the yin gang? <laughs> Gotta get hit with this pipe 50 times. <laughs> the ending is weird because... Once you defeat the boss, then he runs away and you follow him. Uh-huh. And it turns out he's running to the princess. And when he princess. gets... Princess. I can't remember her last name. Yuki. Yuki. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> princess Yuki. Oh, I thought of Yuki's cousin immediately. <laughs> Whenever he runs to her and he's like, I'm, I'm going to take you away. And the then the fox is like, you've proven yourself unworthy. I'm not going to help you anymore. Uh, but without you, I'm just an old man. I can't do anything. And then Ken Yen walks up. Hey, you stay away. I'm serious. Spoilers? Is it over Spoil- in spoiler spoilers, territory? Spoilers, sort of. <laughs> uh, you, then you step a little bit closer, and he stops you. Hey, don't get any closer. You take two steps closer. Hey, now, I'm just an old man. Don't get any closer. And this goes on for like four or five times <laughs> before you get to him. And, and he then explodes? It, and he runs. Then he's like, like Mario getting hit. He burp, 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 falls down, and then you save the princess, and the fox runs away. That was, I, I almost thought you were going for a Scooby Doo ending there. I thought it was like really close, where it's like, oh, it was old man Ronan the whole time. <laughs> but overall, until that boss, fucking great game. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it more than uh, Metal Warriors, even. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm surprised you like that one so much. I think that and and in the 30s, I think it's good for it. How long did it take you to beat? Six hours, including the two hour boss fight, or including not? The two hour boss fight. It was. After I beat the first boss, it was pretty clean sailing. Man, it took throughout me, most of it. I played like for five hours and got to Warlock Zone Five. I, but I did play a lot of mini games. A lot. See, of I played the games. quiz game enough to get money for last me a few levels, and then that's it. Mm. So that's probably that's probably where the rub was. I, I did enjoy my high low dice roller simulator. <laughs> that was nice. I did not make five thousand dollars. <laughs> I've got some achievements. You got achievements, Tyler. Mm-hmm. What I've you got, got? I've got two. Okay. I've got. Lil Setzer Gabbiani. Okay. <laughs> you unlock Lil Setzer Gabbiani mm-hmm. by throwing 1,000 coins. Okay, cool. I didn't know if it was going to be a slot machine reference. Did you? That would be good, too. That's. Did you get to that level? I, could, I felt like it was a hidden level or something. Did you? It might have been. I don't remember this. There was a level, like, right before I got to the sumo wrestlers in Warlock Zone 4. I felt like it was, I found a shortcut or something because it was like the whole floor was made out of springs that would activate a giant slot machine in the background. I miss this. And then like if it was triple X's, enemies would just rain from the ceiling. And if it was like triple hearts, all these hearts would fall from the ceiling and you could use them to heal up to full. There were bombs, like if three bombs, it was always three of something. If bombs came up, bombs dropped from the sky. If you got scrolls, like scrolls would just fall from the sky. And if you got coins, coins would fall from the sky. So huh. I farmed that for a little while. Okay, that's fair, <laughs> as you should. Sorry, I didn't mean that. I, <laughs> I got off, off topic. And then my other one is Lil Link. Lil Link. Lil Link. You unlock Lil Link by throwing 100 bombs. Okay, I like it. That's all I got. Were there... Were there secrets to be accessed with the bombs? I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to use the bombs for. Everything I read, the bombs are just, they're useless. They're as powerful as coins, and they cost more, and they don't go as far. I like, I use them on the sumo wrestlers. I like that because they have, like, a little bit of a different arc. Mm -hmm. Because, like, the coins come straight out, so sometimes it was hard for me to jump and hit an enemy. Yeah. And, like, a lot of times you have to hit a boss's head. So it, it always felt like if I was if I was using a bomb, I could jump higher than them and just kind of drop the yeah, bomb on them. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know if Trainsy's going to pick up, but know. Trainsy had something to say about that, those bombs. That was there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've got some achievements as well, Tyler. Yeah. You can tell that I enjoyed this game enough to prepare a few in advance. <laughs> so um, that's, that's saying something. That's really saying something. The first achievement I've got, Tyler, is called Samurai Pizza Cat. <laughs> And in order to unlock Samurai Pizza Cat, you have to purchase a slice of pizza and collect a cat statue after defeating a samurai <laughs> in Warlock Zone 2. Because there are so many samurais in Warlock Zone 2. It is ridiculous. I've got another achievement, Tyler. 
It's called It's Not Funny, He's a Ninja Master. Nice. And in order to unlock It's Not Funny, He's a Ninja Master, unfortunately there are no rats in the game, but you have to learn all judo techniques and just know that you're superior. You can't ever use a judo technique. <laughs> You just have to know. A deep judo down. master will will not use his Never. judo for the for, for personal gain. That's Spike Spiegel lesson number one. <laughs> I've got one more. Mm. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it, Tyler. I got two. I got two. <laughs> okay. I got go ninja, go ninja, go. And in order to unlock go ninja, go ninja, go, you have to defeat two babies, two <laughs> babies in Warlock Zone Five. They're in carriages and they shoot bullets at you. You have to kill two of them. <laughs> Last achievement, Tyler. Mm. It's called Macro Game. And in order to unlock Macro Game, you have to play every mini game in the game. I unlocked okay. Macro Game <laughs> yeah, <you laughs> a did. couple times. <laughs> I enjoyed my Mario Party. That's all I got. That's all the achievements I got. Mm -hmm. Tyler. Yes, Dave. I've had a lot of fun today. Me too. Trainsy's having a lot of fun out there. <laughs> no one can hear it but us. Training so. around, yeah. Training around. He. he Crazy heard that we're going to replace them with a much more efficient and cleaner operating bullet train. <laughs> <laughs> so Tracy's like, don't forget about no. me, guys. <laughs> nope. I'm not like that kid from the sad lot. I'm pretty, I'm pretty nice. Just Nutty. give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to give this game a beard, Tyler, mm -hmm. on a scale of Fu Manchu to, I don't know, I can't name you another... Japanese style mm -hmm. beard. What kind of beard would it be? Well, you're pretty close. <laughs> I've got a running theme today. Okay. So for this game, I give this Pi Maze beard. Pi Maze beard. Pi May. Pi Maze. Pi Maze. Is that is that like a pie that Aunt May makes for for Peter? It's close. Okay. It's very similar. Okay. It is the the uh, ninja master who teaches um, Beatrix in Kill Bill. Uh, her her abilities. Okay, that is Pai Mei. Okay, okay. So he has he has a Fu Manchu. Right. So does Nicholas Cage and um, Grindhouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're on a theme. I like it. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to my next question. I want to see where this theme takes us. What kind of magical journey we're on? What kind of mystical journey we're on? Mm -hmm. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses from Kill Bill, because I know that's your theme. It's mm -hmm. a Kill Bill theme. It is a Kill Bill theme. What kind of glasses would you give it? So I'm going to have to give it sort of a reverse pair of glasses, mm. symbolizing its difficulty. So shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I give it um, L, who is California Mountain Snake, her eyeless face after it her is second a Kill eye Bill is theme. I was joking. <laughs> nope, Kill Bill theme. I love it. Up top. First high five. Yeah. First high five, high five ever. <laughs> For Megalixer, we gotta come up with a we gotta come up with a signature five because that's Scrubs styley. Yeah, that's so true. I don't Tad five. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. We'll think about well, it. Yeah. But before we wrap things up, Dave, I know we're we're close to running over. You got a quiz, don't you? You damn right. Yes. Quiz. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I we, have. We gotta get this episode up in like forty five minutes. Let's do it. <laughs> we can do it. I have. A ninja quiz for you. Yes, I almost prepared a ninja quiz for you, <laughs> but I've been so busy this week. All right, so number number one. All right, let's do it. Continuing a little bit on my. Can you theme. help me? Can we be a team? So this, <laughs> some of these some of these are a little bit harder. Some oh, of these fuck. are some of these are a lot easier. I kind of tried to run it. Okay, this is the katana wielding leader of the crazy eighty eight. Oh um, man, you were just on this kill bill. <laughs> yeah, I don't kick, know why. Dude. Um. But I had to look this up. Ishii Orien? You're very close. Damn it. Oren Ishii. Oren Ishii. Here, I, I will sub this. I'll sub it since I didn't even know it. I had, I'll sub it out for you. Okay. Name the three ninjas. I can't. No, I can't do that. I know who the three ninjas are, and I know that they eventually kick back, but <laughs> I can't tell you their names. Okay, um, I'll, I'll give you two of the three, see if you can name the one I'm missing I, I out. I can't. Mark. Rocky, <laughs> Blank, and Tum Tum. No, I don't. Cult. Schmocky? Colt. Rocky, Rocky Schmocky and Tum Tum. Rocky Schmocky. <laughs> uh, Rum Tum Tigger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number number two. Official number two. Uh-huh. The Ninja from Ninja Gaiden. What was his name? Jubei? I don't know. Get just... I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Ninja. Get, <laughs> a very common reoccurring name for fighters in Japanese. Ryu? Japan. Ryu is correct. Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> 
This one, this one's difficult. It's coming. Oh, great! It, I'm oh, a, the first difficult one. <laughs> I'm, testing, <laughs> I'm a testing it because I know it's in your wheelhouse. I made it hard. Oh, great! A high-ranking Foot Clan ninja. Nope. Shredder's granddaughter. Nope. Oh, I don't. I know who this is. And Leonardo's love interest. I don't know her name. I know I'm, I'm familiar with this character, but I don't know her name. Karai. Okay. John Turley knows that. I'm willing yeah. to bet you. Yeah. He's yeah. he's screaming at his iPod right now. Husband of Rydia. <laughs> I, I don't know. Final Fantasy IV. It's been a long-ass time, dude. Edge. Dr. Bayo. Uh-huh. Translation. Believe it. I was hoping that was the question, because I know the <laughs> end. I, d- I would have been able to answer that. Because <laughs> I didn't know what you watched it in, either Japanese or English. So Japanese. I had to give to give to you both. Who says that? Um, Naruto. Naruto is correct. First one. <laughs> Doing great. <laughs> Doing strong. <laughs> Hagar, Cody, and blank. What the? What was his name? Um, I'm really on the spot here, Tyler. I'm really on the spot. Um, guy. Guy is correct. Or Guy. 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 He's French. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian. The Materia Thief. Uh, Yuffie or Yuffie. I don't know. Correct. Which way it goes. Escaped from hell after the marriage rapture. Shao Kahn. Shang Tsung. Is Scorpion. It, he's a ninja. <laughs> Scorpion. Because, <laughs> I mean, all of those answers were correct. <laughs> you didn't say you had to be a ninja, except for the very beginning of the quiz. <laughs> Wario wears female ninja characters. Female. They're, fe- they're female. <laughs> I don't know. I don't there are know. two of them. Cat and Anna. Okay. All right. No, I, I didn't know that, clearly. So here, here's Edge. The, here, <laughs> Here's a deep cut challenge. Uh Uh-huh. The last one, question 10. The real name of the ninja Shadow from Final Fantasy VI. Was he Clyde? Clyde. Yeah. Clyde is... Or was Clyde his partner? No, Clyde. Clyde, His name is Clyde. Do you also know his last name? Um, no, I don't. I'm sorry. Clyde Arany. Arany. Gotcha. And that, 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 his last name's hard to figure out because you basically only know, because it's also Realm's last name. That's what I was trying to think. I was trying to think uh, I could come up with, because like Strago has a different last name, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what, because I was like, I was trying to think of Strago's last name, and then I was like, ah, I don't think that's going to do me any good. What's Realm's last name? And I was like, mm, nope, don't know that either. I know I know Saban and Edgar's <laughs> because those are really easy. <laughs> yeah. And then Locks, but other than that, I don't think I know any of the last names. Celeste, Sherry. That's it, yeah. The ones you name plus that one. It's about, about all I know. And Setzer, of course. Yeah, yeah, Setzer. That's it. That's all I got then. All right, that, that was quiz. hard. That was difficult. The Ninja Quiz? That was difficult. Yeah, that was a lot harder than the quiz I was going to give you. <laughs> <laughs> so feel free to give me like a really brutally hard quiz. That's okay. No, I like it. I like it. I love I love quizzes. I wish we had like quiz music that we could like, <laughs> that we could play without fear of being sued by The Price is Right or something. <laughs> yeah, but but. but I bet we can find some. I bet we can find appropriate quiz music. Okay. I'm, Which, I'm down for a bumper for that that I can play. Because we usually don't play music or anything, but I do think it would be I do think it'd be cool to like be like, oh, it's quiz time. Mm-hmm. That's the name of the segment. <laughs> I'll play the Vivazelas. Vuvuzelas? Vuvuzela. I don't know what they're called. That, <laughs> and then we'll go into quiz music. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll listen to uh, some fine Jamaican music. <laughs> Tyler, I've got a quiz for you. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Tyler, mm-hmm. can you guess the price of this game? What I want, what I'm looking for here, is the lowest price on Amazon. The, the lowest price you mm-hmm. can get for the Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Forty six dollars. I will give you a hint. That's wrong. Okay. Second hint. I don't know if this is some kind of fucked up joke. It is also the year that World War II ended. <laughs> <laughs> 1932? Nope. I don't think World War II even started then. Shit. <laughs> they had it? I don't think so. 1945. 1945. I don't know if like that's some guy. Like I just... love history, so you just exposed me <laughs> big time. I'm more, more of a Civil War guy, not a World War, <laughs> I'm War guy. I'm more of a Civil War buff. So I don't know. I thought that was weird because when I saw the price, I was like, is that a World War II reference? Because it's like <laughs> such a Japanese game. I was like, is someone just being a really big asshole on Amazon? What's the second lowest price? Then? I don't know. I didn't look, Tyler. I'm only concerned about. So I don't know. I fucked up my reveal, but okay, <laughs> 1945. That's a lot. That's I figured for a game I'd never heard of. I thought it might be a little more rare than that. 
Um, yeah, I thought it would be too. I thought it would be more expensive. Would you pay nineteen forty five for this game? Absolutely, I would. Would you really? Yeah. 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 Okay. You would. You would want this in your collection today. I would want this sitting on my shelf. Yep. Okay. Especially for that price, that's fine. Pretty much just twenty dollars. Have that on my shelf. Good. Good to go. Crazy talk. And that it's a co op game. It's like it'd uh, be that's, fun to that play. Is, that is true. I think it just came out on like um, the virtual console. Oh, okay. Not too long ago. I get it on the virtual console. I don't know how much it is there. I paid nine dollars for it for the on the virtual console. Let's do it. Let's do our, our very next other ship Monday on. <laughs> we'll be the co-op this game. Legend of right. the Rascal Ninja. <laughs> Is that rain? I thought I turned the air off. It sounds like the air. That's rain. All right. If you hear anything, uh, listener, it is raining heavily. Yeah, we just entered monsoon season. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes or Stitcher, so you don't miss the next episode. I've been assured by by Phil Duvall of Sacred Bre- Breakfast that next Monday we're going to have a special crossover episode. All right. I don't believe that. Because we, we've already announced that we're doing this uh, once. Last like, week. Yeah. But he, he apologized profusely for vanishing off the earth and not responding <laughs> to any of like three messages I sent him. And let's just say I don't know if our listeners are being nice or the fact that they, or, uh, they're either being nice, don't pay attention, or we don't have any listeners because <laughs> no one was like, where the hell was the Goonies 2 episode? <laughs> <laughs> so supposedly next week for Other Ship Monday, mm-hmm. Goonies two. I'm not counting on it for the. Indians. I'm not. I'm not counting on it. If if hey look guys, we might do something else. Yeah. We're just gonna throw that <laughs> we'll out there. To see. <laughs> While you're there, don't forget to subscribe. Give the show a five star review. Don't give give the, the five, five star, star Tyler. <laughs> Give the five star, man. You can't. You can't just kill that. <laughs> I'm sure I'll forget and bring it back. <laughs> Give the show a five star review. Write a review. Yeah. If there's a game you want us to play, mention it in your review, and we'll get to it eventually. eventually. I also say if you're not going to leave a five star review, don't leave anything at all. I'm going to say that. Don't do it. <laughs> just don't do. It. Look, trust me. If you if look. If you hated this show enough to get to this point, you you had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> five stars or give the five star GTFO. <laughs> Take your BC comics and get out. Don't worry, guys. Like Tyler said, we will be back. Uh, we I don't think we're going to be talking about the Goonies 2. I really don't. But we might. We might. I don't know. Let's see. We'll see if it's a proper sequel. Um, I'd rather play The Sandlot too. Actually, no. I think that happened, didn't it? The Sandlot? Yeah, I think they made a sequel, right? Like a, for like a made for TV oh, like, sequel. Oh, uh, like probably. Yeah, probably. I did not we'll see look, it. We'll uh, have to look into ugh. that. If it's there, it'll be in the oh, show notes. God. Yeah, it's probably like available in its entirety on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it was closing the show, right? Yep. We'll be back. We're gonna be talking about a game or Sandlot or something. Who knows? Hercules, uh, Nutty Professor. I don't know. Something. In the meantime, if you can't get enough Tadpog goodness. You can always find us on tadpog.com. That's where the show notes are. Um, check it out. Why not? Who knows? There might be some transvestite gifts on there. Um, there might not. Or sorry, transgender. Sorry, we gotta be we gotta keep it. Mm-hmm. Crisscross applesauce. Yeah, right. You can't sit. You can't sit transgender style. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could, but I don't know. You can also find us on Facebook. We are at facebook.com/slash tadpog. There are always a lot of cool people there doing a lot of cool shit. Um, if you if you haven't liked us yet, I don't know. Come by, check it out. Um, sometimes we got photographs of turds on the floor. I, don't, I keep going back to that. Well, yeah, it's been a while. It's a, I'm, I mean, Harold it's Arthur. It's like we're getting turds all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, you can't. I can't log into Facebook without seeing a turd on the floor. Uh, Harold Arthur has left us a present. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter. We are at tadpog underscore podcast. There are. Um, also, some cool people there retweeting us. So, if you're one of those people who are retweeting us, thank you very much. We do appreciate it. Um, if you want to call us with a question, mm-hmm. could be game related. That's just a that's just a jumping off point. Yeah, could be serial related. You got a serial question? We haven't answered one of those. Yeah, or Naruto question. Yeah, yeah if you like want to send Tyler a Naruto question, that's that's fine. I'll just sit here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, please call us. Let us know. You can reach us at 270-883-2555. I said that with such confidence. Well deserved. Mm, good, good. Our intro song, Tyler. Intro song. Is Moves. Moves. By Sycamore Drive. 
Puya Chaka. Mm -hmm. A link to that track, Tyler, can be found in the show notes at tadpog.com. So until next time, Mm -hmm. Tropical Tropical Capricorn. Capricorn. Maybe that's maybe it's the maybe it's the Capra 5